What's up, guys? Sean with SRS. See my timer. I can't go over six minutes. Anyway, I'm going to be talking about um, brakes on your reels and um, a little bit about the different kinds. I'm probably going to have to break this up in two different segments because I can only do six minutes. So let's get right into it. Basically, on your low profiles, you're going to have magnetics or centrifugals. Um, your magnetics, like this job, and I'm going to zoom in on the second part and show you exactly what I'm talking about. But your magnetics are the ones where you have to dial on at 0 to 10 usually. Um, you know, 0 being off, 10 being set on the highest. Your centrifugals are the ones that you're going to see on your actual spool. Um, different types is a Fluger. They've got little spring-loaded action type ones. Um, on the Corrados and uh, some of the other reels, they'll have what I call the top hat ones where you pull the pins on or off. Pushing them in turns them off. Pushing them out um, turns them on. Um, what's the difference between the twos? Two different ones. Uh, your centrifugals mostly work with the initial cast. Um, that start off cast um, when you first fire out, you know, whatever it is, let's say a crankbait, um, your centrifugals work to keep the spool in, how do I say, in sync. Um, and uh, your magnetics more work with the second part of your cast and the downfall of your, your bait, whatever it is. Something to note. Excuse me. Um, I did a test with both centrifugal and magnetics, and I went and um, I turned all the centrifugals off, free spooled it, say I got about 20 seconds, um, and gradually added a break on every time. Well, by the time I added all six of them on, with my free spool time starting at 20 seconds, with none of them on, and then ending with all of them on, it only changed about four seconds. It went down from maybe 20 seconds to um, 16, 15 seconds. When I did the magnetic, um, with the brakes off, free spooled it 20 seconds, and gradually clicked it from zero to 10. Um, by the time I got to 10, the difference was, it went from 20 seconds to about four. Um, Magnetics significantly have more control over the overall breaking of your spool. Um, which one's better? I guess it kind of depends on what you're throwing. <clears throat> My Fluger Purist, I've just got centrifugals and I love them. But all I throw is crankbaits with that, that reel. Um, and pretty much only um, 3 8 and up. When I have to go down to a quarter ounce one, I like to run um, my Supreme, which actually has both. And that's what I think, the best reel I think is to have both. But, you know, most of the reels don't seem to have that. Um, they seem to have one or the other. And, um, you know, depends on what your reel has. Um, so let's talk about the care. Centrifugals. They have a brass or a copper ring. Um, and these are the ones that need the most care. Um, this is a big part of the super tuning process that I do because um, that ring should be like a mirror finish. Um, and every time you come off the water, I know you're not going to do it, but every time you come off the water, what I like to do is take a um, microfiber and just wipe through it. it. takes all the water off, all the moisture off, any dust that is collected on it. Slap it back in. Every once in a while too, I might dust off the um, spool ends um, that are going to be resting in the pinion gear. But that's a different story. So, that's the care of your centrifugals. Um, as far as the brakes go, you don't really have to do anything. Um, the magnetics. Magnetics Really, there's not too much to do as far as care. Every once in a while, I will take a Q-tip with some alcohol and go over the magnets to get any dirt 
that might have accumulated off of them. But because magnetics don't really come in contact um, with the reel, um, they work with, you know, when you put two magnets together, how they push and pull. Well, it's the same concept, you know, as you, if you ever open them up and you turn the dial, you know, as you turn it up, the brakes come out. So they're closer to the spool, so they're going to grab more. Um, but there's actually never any physical contact with it. So you don't have to worry about um, really it getting dirty. Um, I like to keep them clean. I don't know how much effect it really has on the actual breaking of them. But that's that. Um, for you guys that have the old school, I shouldn't say old school, but the, the round reels, um, your spool has centrifugal brakes and it's usually two um, set up just like this if you ever take your spool off you'll see there's a little plastic piece and I'll zoom in on the second part but they are basically in essence centrifugal brakes when you fire your um, lure out these things slide out now there's no setting on these they just there's just two and when you cast they sling out and um, you know when you stop they recess in um, and that's exactly how they work there's there's no on and off there's no you can I can turn this one on turn that one on and that's just how they work um, back to the centrifugals you know most people might not mess with them but you know play with them um, I usually set two um, and that gets me the best um, casting ability um, Sometimes when it's windy, I have to go to three. Sometimes in real bad wind, I have to go to four. But the reason why that you need to mess with them is because, you know, your centrifugals, your magnetics, and your tension knob all come into play with each other. You know, if, if you're not familiar with them, you need to learn. You need to... to mess with them you know um let me stop this video here so i can do a second part okay back with the second part um i was talking about how you need to mess with your brakes um with specifically with your centrifugals um you know that even though the tension knob is not really a braking system, it is kind of because your tension knob, what it is, is it as you screw that thing down, it puts tension on the end of this spool shaft. Um, and, you know, that's the thing when you raise your reel up and you um, press release bar and, you know, how fast your reel or your um, lure drops down, um, that's based off of your tension knob. Well, all that comes into play when you're casting. Me, myself, I set my centrifugals on two. And then I work, when I have um, my Supreme, I work with the magnetics um, for different wind conditions and, and, and different baits of different sizes and things like that. When I'm using my Fluger, which just has a centrifugal, um, then I have to mess with my tension knob. Um, I like a tension knob with a click because you know how many clicks, and, and if you really mess with them, you can know how many clicks you have to turn back or turn on to get a little bit of resistance on that um, spool shaft and um, that's why I say you gotta play with them. Um, one of the things I did when I first got my bait caster and I, partly the reason why I did it was because um, my wife didn't like me going out and fishing so I would wait till she went to sleep and I would sneak out on the falls at like 11, 12 o'clock and um, the good thing about it was that it really got me in sync with um, my bay casters. I mean, to the point where I could actually, by the sound of them, I knew when that lure was falling. But, you know, it helped me get a good thumb. Um, it helped me, you know, with my casting. It, you know, I had a little headlight so I could look and, and see what I was setting them on. And, you know, I gradually got to the point where now, you know, when I'm out casting and I'll cast and I'll hit some wind, as soon as I get that thing back, I don't even have to look, but I just turn, you know, I know how many clicks to turn on my magnetics or if I need to turn a couple clicks on my tension knob. And, you know, the bay caster will do a lot um, if, you, if you really get into it and really get into the settings of it and everything. And um, 
So now let me bring them over to you so you can see um, what these components are that I was talking about. This is your centrifugal. You see that ring? And like I said, it should be mirror clean. A lot of times on your centrifugal, you'll start to see a ring worked around it. And what that is, is when your brakes, which are these right here, I don't know if you can really see them firing out, but what happens is when they're engaged, when you cast and you, the spool starts to turn, these things fly out. Well, they scrape against this ring. That's the whole braking procedure of them. And, you know, in a long period of time, you'll actually start to create a ring around it. And that's one of the things with the super tune that I take care of. I, I get that groove, that ring out of there so that there's a more even flow and, um, you know, they're not stuck in, in, a, in a rut kind of speed. Your, um, well, this one actually has magnetics, but just a truly magnetic is right here. And that's fully engaged. Sorry, now it's not a good picture. And that's off. Um, off, you can kind of see they're kind of recessed. Engaged all the way. You can see they're out like that. And then your other one. Where's your other spool? Somebody's going to come in. The round reels, like the Abus, the 4600, the 5000s, are, that's your braking right there. And like I said, there's no setting of it. It just stays there, and as you turn, as you fire out your lure, it slings out and um, keeps the reel in constant rotation, or in um, a consistent rotation. So, that's it.